Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for stopping by. As promised, this is the second video in the series that I've been doing with John from Dungeons and Glue Sticks. I'm going to show you how to paint up that stone pier that he has built. I hope you enjoy the process and get a kick out of the color scheme that I decided to go with, something a little different. Any questions, feel free to ask me down below. You can also email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Come and find me over at my Facebook group. I'll make sure the link is in the description as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit that notification bell if you want to find out when I've released my latest video. Also, don't forget there's going to be one more video to this series and that is going to be the accessories video to show you how to make the things that I have created to go with the two different peer styles. That's it for now. Have fun with it. Take care and I'll see you later. Bye. For your base coat, you're going to be doing the same thing as you did with the wooden dock. You're going to use Nutmeg Brown, mix it with a matte Mod Podge, doing equal parts, and you will make sure you paint every nook and cranny of this particular stone pier. Make sure it dries completely before you move on to the next step. Now that the base coat is completely dry, you're going to do your first wash. For this wash, I highly recommend you use the color Pavement for this wash. It's not a completely dark black, but it is a darker black-like color. You can do black if you want to. What I find, though, is doing a pure black wash is definitely going to mute things a little bit more. I prefer to use Pavement in this case, and it's a wash I'm going to be using again later on. Once your wash is completely dry, you're going to move on to doing the brickwork of the arches on the side of the pier. These are the colors that I used, and we're actually going to work them from right to left. So the first color you're going to be putting down is the Tuscan Red, then we're going to move on to the Golden Sunset, from there to Ripe Tomato, and finally wrap it up with Sunkissed Peach. So let's take this step by step for the painting process for these bricks. Starting with the Tuscan Red and using a chisel tip paintbrush, you're going to do about an 80% coverage with this color. Keep in mind, each time you move to a new color, you are going to lessen the amount of coverage you are putting onto these arched brick patterns. This is going to give you that more brick-like appearance that you see in natural brick buildings. Once you've finished with the Tuscan Red, you do want to let this dry enough so that the colors won't completely muddle together. Then you move on to the Ripe Tomato. This is where you're going to drop down the coverage amount from about 80%, let's say, to about 50% of the color. I do find with the brush, it helps to keep the brush a little bit drier, so it's almost like a dry brushing technique. You're just putting on more with the dry brushing technique. After the Ripe Tomato is done and has dried enough, you are then going to move on to Golden Sunset. Same thing as before, drop the amount of coverage you have there, and then wrap it up with the Sunkissed Peach. Again, once the Golden Sunset is dry, again, dropping your coverage down. So little by little, move it across the way, and you're going to keep lowering how much you're covering, and you'll end up with that brick-like appearance with the streaks of colors and the deeper reds showing through underneath. When your arch brick is dry, you are then going to move on to the stone walk area of your pier. And these are the colors that I decided to use in this case. And yes, it's a different color combination, but keep in mind, you do want to keep that golden sunset nearby. So what you're going to use is that golden sunset, then move on to vanilla ice cream and wrap it up with parchment. Starting first with the Golden Sunset and again using your chisel tip brush, you're going to apply this paint about 80 to 75 percent. It's going to start feeling a little bit like mode with this. So no, we're not going to Oz, but you do want to get this base yellow going underneath. Once you've finished with that, let it dry completely because this will blend into the other colors and muck it up. So you do want to make sure this layer is dry. When that layer is dry, you're then going to move on to using vanilla ice cream. And in this case, we are moving down into more of a true dry brushing technique. So you're going to get about a 30% coverage here with your paint. My recommendation is, is with this color, and this is going to sound odd, you're going to work horizontally across the brickwork pattern, not up and down. So taking your brush, dry brush across each area, making sure to go horizontally, not up and down the pathway. And then when you are done with vanilla ice cream, you're going to move on to parchment, doing the same thing, but here's a little trick. You're still going to work horizontally, but pull the brush in the opposite direction that you've been pulling the previous color. And that's just kind of going to give you some variation in the colors on the stone bricks. Also, don't forget to do this to the side pieces of the stone walkway area. 
The next thing you want to address are the wooden posts on this pier. Now you could go back to the wooden pier video that I have and treat the wood the same way as I did in that other video. However, I wanted to keep the warmer tones going with the brickwork. So I decided just to default to using this chocolate bar color. Put that onto each and every post. Uh, think about this as about an 80% coverage again. And again, make sure this dries completely before we move on to our next step. Now here is where the second wash comes in. You're going to go back to that parchment wash that I initially used for that first one, and you're gonna go back and cover the entire piece with this wash. The reason why I'm doing these two washes is because with the first wash, it helps you see all the details of all the different bricks. The second one will bring those details back out because by default, some of this paint will get into the nooks and crannies and hide those grout lines, which you don't wanna have happen, or should I say mortar lines? You know what I mean. So make sure you do that second wash and allow it to dry completely before we add in those finishing touches. For the wooden posts, in this case, you're gonna go back to mixing the medium brown with the parchment color again to a light tan color, and then you're going to dry brush this mixed blend of colors onto your wooden posts. Make sure you keep this at about a 20% coverage here. And this is going to highlight the grooves in the wood and it's going just to give it a little bit more dimension as well. So this is how we're gonna treat our wooden posts to finish them up. And now the final step, which is also optional for you if you want to forego this one, is where we're gonna add in that algae growth on the stones and on the sides of the pier. Now, I'm showing you a picture of the brush that I like to use for this because it's wonky, used up, beaten up look, actually is quite effective for stippling on the olive green that I use to nod to the algae growth on these stones. So just go around, you wanna make sure you put it in the edges along the sides of the walkway. I also made a point to put it between the two different types of stonework just to sort of highlight the difference between the two. And then you can just stipple around in various other areas because let's face it, algae doesn't just necessarily grow in just one spot. So use some artistic light license here if you decide to go with this step. Once everything is completely dry, I do highly recommend that you go back and you seal your pieces, especially if you feel like they're going to be getting a lot of use. Is it necessary? Not necessarily, but it's just personal preference. And in this case, I'm showing you some stills from an actual session that we had in our campaign. It was so much fun to use these. It really brought a lot of different elements into our gameplay. And the other thing that I want to remind you about is that you can check out the accessories video, which will be releasing soon after this one. And you can see how I made all these other little bits of pieces that get added into the piers just to change the look of them a little bit here and there. Also, don't forget, if you haven't checked out the wooden pier video, make sure you get over there and check out the different links for the build as well as for how it gets painted. That is it for now. Any questions, by all means, please comment below and ask away. Or you can email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook. The links for that will be in the description, and I'll also make sure to get a comment going with that. And you can find me on Instagram. Heck, you can find me a lot of different places. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this is something that you can put to use in your own creations. As always, enjoy this. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye. So I know the video on this absolutely is grainy and everything like that, but this is a little glimpse into how I do the audio. I literally sit in our walk-in closet because it has the best acoustics <laughs> for recording when I'm doing the voiceovers. The other thing is, is that the follow the yellow brick road, that wasn't an audio tweak. That was me. Follow the yellow brick road. I do weird voices. It's my thing. That's it from me. So have fun. Bye.